What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Doing Football. It is crunch time in your fantasy football draft. Get ready to go. We are less than two weeks to the NFL season. We're what, nine days, fellas? Ten it's getting days? Getting really exciting. Maybe ten. Very excited. We've tried to record this episode three times. Yep. Different bits and pieces getting screwed up. We're back again. But you know what? You would you would be missing bits and pieces if you're using a lot more 4.0 oh, for Manscaped. Baby. Yes. You absolutely would not. Wow. That Make was an sure, incredible transition. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to check out Manscaped. Get the lawnmower 4.0. I had a big weekend at the, at the uh, I shouldn't say at the cottage. I was in a tent uh, camping. So well-groomed, well-prepared for nice. the weekend. Jared went to New York City. I went to New York City. Party. Had, yeah, to, talk had about, to use the old lawnmower over in New York City there. Uh, promo code BOX for 20% off. Worldwide shipping, free shipping as well if you use the promo code. Be sure to check out Manscaped today. Negative, Avery's favorite place or favorite uh, activity is be negative about different things. If you know Avery in the office, he's I'm not that guy. negative. He's You're pretty negative. He's the guy that gives You're the a pessimistic. Lot of, yeah, pessimistic True. Yeah. Opinions. No, I try to be a realist. We're doing do not draft running backs. Um, Avery, get us started. I'm I'm coming after Avery when it's my turn though. Yeah, yeah. This is warranted though. But I growth, you know, as a human being, that's growth I'm trying to see. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but Jared, so I gave my player to Jared and Jared goes, Oh no shit, you shouldn't draft this player. I was like, <laughs> we know that because we talk to each other every day about these players, right? He's like, obviously no one's drafting this player. And it's like, uh, no, he's getting drafted in the third rounds of most drafts. So my uh, running back I'm avoiding, I'm not drafting is Miles Sanders of the Philadelphia Eagles. This offseason, they bring in carry on Johnson. Obviously he's hurt. He doesn't matter. And they draft Kenneth Gainwell. Red flag right away for me. If you're bringing in multiple running backs, you don't think he's a guy. Also, Nick Sirianni, new head coach. He's not a Nick Sirianni pick. He's not part of his regime, right? Who knows how loyal he is going to get him the ball. Shane Steichen is the offensive coordinator. He was, their, he was the Chargers offensive coordinator last season, where Austin Eckler was third on the team in receptions in only 10 games. But obviously, Justin Herbert went crazy. Austin Eckler's a huge upside pass catching back. He's incredible. So who knows how they're going to game plan with Jalen Hurts this year. Another thing for Jalen Hurts, I think his pass catching upside for Miles Sanders is down because of Jalen Hurts. Maybe he's not going to dump it down. He's going to use his feet to get those five, six yards in those tough situations, right? Yep. Also, I brought this up the first time we tried to record this, but the funny thing was that Miles Sanders' best game last year was when he and Jalen Hurts both had 100 yards on the ground. So that was interesting. And then, Jared, what was your stat about the New oh, Orleans Saints game? That was game? the Saints game, right? Yeah. yeah, in that one game. Like almost all of his yards came on one carry when he had like one 80 yard touchdown. Yeah. So and that was the majority. So that's the only reason he had 100 yards. That's that why game. you don't look at the full box scores. That's why you watch why the football film matters. games. Yeah. All 22, Jared's on it. So I don't think his touchdown upside is incredibly high this season, which is an issue for a guy who's not going to have that many touches. Last year, 164 carries, only 867 rush yards, six touchdowns, 52 targets, only 28 receptions last year for 197 yards through the air. So bad. 24th ranked running back strength of schedule, going as running back 16, four fumbles in 12 games last year. You talk about Ezekiel Elliott, have a horrible game, or horrible season holding onto the ball. Maybe Miles Sanders was just as bad, too. We don't even see that. I mean, splitting time with Boston Scott for first team yeah. reps. Yeah, he doesn't have league winning upside in my opinion. I don't know everything, but from what I've seen, I don't think. But you do know upside. something. I know enough, and I'd rather have David Montgomery and James Robinson at this point. Yeah. I what do you think agree. of? I was. I'm just thinking of this while he was talking. What do you think of the comparison between Sanders and Gaskin? I feel like there's no way that Sanders has at a point comes to where he's in the backfield alone, like just workhorse. You know, people are talking about Malcolm Brown. Salvin Ahmed for Miles Gaskin, but I bet you there's a better chance that Miles Gaskin is alone in that backfield as a workhorse than Miles Sanders. Is. I would take yeah, him a hundred times thing. out of a hundred, I think. Yeah. yeah, and and then we have the the factor of Jalen Hurts when he was on the field running the ball high, more than Lamar Jackson did last season. Yeah, and that there, means so. no dump off passes is because Hurts is going to take it for himself. Yeah, and it doesn't help that Sanders just sucks at <laughs> catching the football. <laughs> like he was atrocious last year. Some of the like drops he had were just disgusting. Yeah, keynote like Avery said, it's not it's not Nick Sirianni's guy. It's not yeah. his guy. So it's like it's like college football, you know, when you when the coach gets in there and after four years it's finally his guys. That's what this is like. I don't think it's his guy there. Yeah, definitely not his guy. Gainwell's definitely interesting. The Memphis. Hey, give Memphis me Memphis pass catchers. Give me Memphis running backs, yeah. and I can build you a Super Bowl winning team. Yeah. That's for sure. Not that they've been on a Super Bowl winning team recently, but we can build one. All right, let's not get carried away with Gainwell here. <laughs> <laughs> He's still what a fifth round and running back. I I'll, I'll have to say this for people that you know before we got into YouTube, 
I would have sang the praises for Carry On Johnson on this if we had a show here that year that he was drafted. Oh, yeah. Like nobody's years business. Back, Love that. Did. guy. I would have been the same. But like, it didn't work out, and I don't think it. I don't think he, it's going too fancy cut. wise. He got cut. He's not even on the Eagles anymore. Yeah, I think. He was, oh, he got cut. It was yeah. like injury waived or something. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I don't think he's with them anymore. That's what I said. Yeah. I'll save the best for last year. So All right. Ahead. Yeah. Let's move on. My guy. It's a bit of a hot take to say not to draft this guy. It's Jonathan Taylor of the Indianapolis Colts, currently going off as the running back 7, ADP of 7.2. Now, Taylor was absolutely elite at the end of last season. Over the last five games, he averaged 26 PPR points, 19.4 rushing attempts, 1.4 touchdowns, and 130 rushing yards per game. Like, this guy was tearing up defenses there at the last bit of the year. But if you look a little deeper, look at who he actually played in those weeks, you can understand why. He had the Texans, the Raiders, the Texans again, the Steelers, and the Jags. So that's a pretty easy, easy slate schedule. of games there. And even in that slate, like there were still some aspects of his game that I like didn't really like. Like he looked at receptions. He only averaged two receptions per game in those in those five weeks. That's not his thing for sure. Yeah, it's like not his thing. He, and Hines is still there. Like he's they're not gonna phase Hines out of the game because Jonathan Taylor is a good runner. Hines is still going to be a great pass catcher, so they're not going to give Taylor that passing work that you need for that league-winning upside running back. And that's what you want with these first-round running backs. You want somebody who's going to give you league-winning upside. And that's not all. His, his schedule this season is tough. Like When I was doing my Indianapolis Colts season preview, I never realized how hard this season is going to be for him. He has the Seahawks, the Rams, the Dolphins, the Ravens, the 49ers, the Bills, the Bucks, the Patriots, the Cardinals, and the Titans twice. That's 11 of the 17 fantasy weeks right there against teams where it's going to be either a shootout or a tough defense they're playing up against, which means not very many carries, yards are hard to come by. And if that's the case, that could mean a lot of weeks where we just see a eight-point week from Jonathan Taylor, which is not something I want for I, my running back. I wish I came more prepared and I looked into this, but we should, we sh- you should keep an eye on when the Colts play the Jags um, I, and the one Texans. Of, one of the Jags the weeks is week 18 when there's no fantasy okay. left. Okay. Um, otherwise, I believe they play each of them early in the season, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. So it might only be like at most one of the playoff weeks. Yeah, because I was thinking on like a buy low or sell high type, yeah. of, type of deal. Like if he was playing them late in the season, then maybe he's someone you could, he, he struggles this year and you grab him near the end for the playoffs. But if they're just sprinkled in, then it yeah. just is what it he's is. He's going to have those easy weeks because he's got an easy division besides the Titans, but like the rest of the schedule. One of the, the pass catching things here is obviously Phillip Rivers was his quarterback last year, right? Yeah. And he's playing mostly first and second downs. They gave the third down back, uh, third down touches to other guys. But look, look at Austin Eckler. Phillip Rivers loves to check down the ball. And the fact that Jonathan Taylor couldn't get involved in the passing yeah. game is a kind of a red flag for me for his pass catching upside as well. Yeah. Phillip Rivers is going to dunk the ball down all game. And Jonathan Taylor wasn't there for it. Now Carson Wentz isn't going to drop the ball off more than Phil Rivers did, I can oh almost God. guarantee that's not going to happen. Nope. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like Jonathan Taylor is going to have a bad season. Like, I think he's still going to have a good season. It's just not going to be that league-winning potential that even some guys behind him have, like Zeke or Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, Antonio Gibson. Like, those guys are going to get involved in the passing game. Like, they're going to be involved at any point in the game. So, why take Jonathan Taylor as high as you have to take him when you can just get one of these other guys? And I'm glad you didn't say it was because of the committee because that, we've seen some things come out that they're going to use him a lot this year. So I don't think that's yeah. one of the reasons to stay off of him. Yeah, you should be that beat writer this morning, right? Yeah. Still going to get lots of usage. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, going to be gonna very be involved. involved. We can all be had at a, at a, at a certain Absolutely. price, right? Exactly. Right. Everyone has um, their value. Who would you be taking? Let's say we, we talk about our usual four. It goes um, CMC, Dalvin, Kamara, Henry, Aaron Jones, Zeke, Eckler, who are you taking? You're at the eighth overall spot. Ooh. That's a tough choice. Like, I'd probably have to go, like, Saquon at that point. Like, even though I'm a little worried about the injury, like, he still has the league winning upside that I don't think Jonathan Taylor has. So I'm taking Saquon over Taylor at that point. Okay. So he's still there. I get, but again, like you said, he's yeah, probably like, going probably, the, the Probably the after those guys. Yeah. That's where I'd start to consider Taylor. Okay. Okay. Uh, before I get to who I have as my do not draft running back, be sure to check out the owner's box super flex salary cap game for week one. Yes. We uh, have a free entry for you. Use promo code DREW9 
$10 free entry to the contest, no kickers, no defense, super flex spot, something that you have never seen in the weekly fantasy space before. So be sure to check it out, get your lineups in on there. You can put up to 10 lineups into the 100K contest, and we've even got dollar contest. We're giving you, we also give you $5 for verifying. So I just gave Five you more free entries. I just give you six free entries into contests where you can win thousands of dollars. So what are you, like, what are you waiting for? Pause the video maybe. And Show just us your sharp and tweet us your lineups, yeah. right? And we'll take tweet a look at lineups. those. Um, my running back that I do not want to draft this season is one, I'm not sure how much you can see behind me, but one that Avery Chenier drafted in the owner's box. Uh, Superflex redraft league. What did he say uh, he would do if he drafted a steal? All right, boys, come on. I said I would kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> he took Najee Harris <laughs> round, in round three. Okay, let's relax here. Round three, that's great value, right? You still said you would kill yourself, though. It, yeah, I'll kill myself once I win the league. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, right now, yeah, it was fine in the third. But people, I did a draft last Thursday. He went in the first round, right? So it's That's like he's where going, we're talking, folks. He's, get, he's going crazy. Yeah, the stocks are way up. Yeah, they're way up. Uh, but again, Avery did say in a previous video this summer that he'd rather kill himself than draft a Pittsburgh Steeler. And I've grown know, as a man at this point. I heard him talking up Deontay Johnson last week a little bit. Soon he's probably going to draft Chase Claypool. I did. And then, he's, I and then you know what? <laughs> Sleeper video coming soon. Juju might be on. No, there, right? no, no. I did draft Chase Claypool in that other league I was in on Thursday. <laughs> we can all be had of value. Yeah, had of value. But again, my my running back not to draft this season is Najee Harris. Again, there is a point in the draft that I would take him, but I am seeing people having Najee Harris ranked as a top 10, top 12 running back this season, and I just can't see it. You know, we talk about volume. We've said on the show before that volume is something you want to find in fantasy football. It trumps all, but I have a lot of issues with Najee Harris being a RB1 this season. Last year, James Conner ranked 27th in the NFL in red zone rushing attempts. Where do running backs separate themselves? Where, do, where does every wide receiver, tight end, running back separate themselves when Touchdowns. they get into the end zone. And Hit it was a very, it. very tough thing for Steelers running backs to do last season. James Conner, in that red zone rushing attempts, ranked behind Zach Moss. Damn. Zach Moss. Damn. You'd think Your if their offensive Bills line player. was that bad, too, they'd address it, right, T-Mac? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Thank you, Avery, just queuing me up here. It's <laughs> as if we've recorded this video already. <laughs> uh, PFF has ranked the Pittsburgh Steelers' offensive line 31st in the NFL, second last in the NFL. It is a fucking disaster. <laughs> Yikes. Apologies if I miss pronounce your name, friend, but uh, Chuck Wuma Okafor, or Okorafor moves from light, right to left tackle. Okay? t what's the most important position on the offensive line? It might be on the entire field of the quarterback is left tackle. Left tackle, <laughs> most important. So, Jared, there are 84 eligible tackles for ranking in PFF. Get, guess where this guy ranked? 73rd. 74th. Damn it. I, after three tries, <laughs> I still couldn't get it. 74th in the NFL among all tackles, and they moved him to the most important position on the line. That is terrifying. Um, they lost to Castro. Pouncey retired. I think DeCastro Castro retired as well. Um, Filer is on to the Chargers. They lost their three, I would say their t three top players at the position, and they ha their replacements are less than ideal. It, it, this offensive line is going to struggle yeah. this season. Um, and here... There's, there's the issue with that, but there's also another thing that I have a problem with going back to that red zone rushing um, totals from last year. Last season, 58% of the plays the Steelers ran inside the five-yard line were pass plays. Now, you might look at 58% and say, well, that's, you know, that's not a crazy, crazy amount. Well, ranked third in the NFL, and when you're at the two-yard line or the one-yard line and it's first down, second down— you're very rarely throwing the ball. like that, that nearly never happens, but it happened a lot with the Steelers. The only teams that ranked behind them were the Bucs, um, who we know that what that running back situation was like. You know, Fournette really didn't come into his own until later in the season, really the playoffs. Um, and then the Jags, who were just consistently playing behind and, and needed to just throw the ball to, to stay up with the clock. So for me, I mean, it's just, it's a tough spot for Najee Harris. I think he's got a lot of talent. I like Najee Harris as a player, but he has, you know, playing in Alabama has always played behind a top five, top 10 offensive line unit in college. So this is something that he's never experienced before. And there, there are plenty of players I'd rather look to than Najee Harris, considering where he's starting to be drafted. You know, a guy like Antonio Gibson I like better. Um, 
Who else would I be rather have? Aaron than, Jones. Yeah, Aaron Jones I'd definitely rather have than Najee Harris. Austin Eckler for sure. Yeah, Austin Eckler. Um, just just players who have you know are, are great talents, but also have a better system surrounding them and and can move the ball when they're when they have their touches. So yeah, I mean just to counterpoint that a bit, like. I think Najee Harris is like a good version of Joe Mixon. Like, if Joe Mixon was good at football, it would be Najee <laughs> Harris. I was just about to say, I could see him being inefficient as fuck like yeah. Joe Mixon is. Yeah, yeah. But 3.6 like, yards per carry was Mixon, right, last year? Yeah, it was atrocious. But like, um, Najee Harris, he's going to be involved in every part of this game. Like, the Steelers used a first round pick on him. And they needed offensive line help bad, yet they were still like, no, we're taking a running back. We want to use this guy. He's going to be involved everywhere. They're going to throw him the ball. He's going to be used on the goal line. Like, He's going to have every opportunity to succeed, even if the players around him suck. And with his talent, I think he's going to have that ability to do so. Like We even saw a few years ago with Josh Jacobs. Like, It didn't look good coming into his rookie year that the team around him was going to help his, him produce in fantasy at all. But yet, even though they sucked, he was still good. Like he had a great rookie year, and I think Najee Harris could have a similar year to that. A lot of people in the fantasy community are having are touting Steelers players as breakouts and having good years. So where are we thinking? So Deontay has obviously been hyped up. Chase Claypool too. Yep. Najee too. Is a it, lot of guys. Is it Big Ben's going to have a really good year no. this year with them, or is just one of these guys not going to do as well as everyone thinks they're going to do? Yeah, I think multiple of them won't do well. Like I, I'm not in on Deontay Johnson or Juju Smith Schuster. So yeah. Like for me, I, I like Najee Harris. Like I would be willing to draft him, probably not in the first round. But if that's where he's starting to go, then I fully agree with T Mac. Like, do not draft him there. But at the early second, I'm taking him. Well, yeah. what about in the third at the, after the turn? Oh, that's definitely <laughs> not. I would rather kill myself right, than do well, that. Yeah, sharp. <laughs> I just like I, I see this as like this is almost like this, the 49ers situation where it's like you know there's a lot of guys we can we can build positive outlooks for, but. It really, if someone does really well, it's going to hurt someone else on the team. Maybe Najee Harris isn't isn't the guy, and maybe he's the one that's the most successful. I'm just worried that we're in the we're we're getting into the season, and they still have the same issues where they can't run the ball, and they since they can't run the ball, they don't want to do it in the in the red zone where they have a chance to put the, the or score a touchdown, so they're throwing it, and then we're just taking away a ton of that upside for you know you have all the volume because you think you're going to have all this opportunity to put the ball in the end zone, and then they kind of take it away from him because they can't run it at all. Anyways, Najee Harris, Avery, he's got plans uh, after this video. Right, so we got to stop talking about this, boys. My uh, mother watches this probably. Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor, <laughs> Najee Harris, and Miles Sanders. We're avoiding those guys this season, especially at their current ADP. Be sure to check out the Lawnmower 4.0 for Manscaped. Subscribe. subscribe to the channel. Yeah, subscribe to the channel. We've been seeing you guys enjoying the videos. You're watching this video. You probably haven't liked it yet. You haven't subscribed yet. Please. Do it. Awesome. Subscribe. We can get a raise. Comment who, comment who you do not want to draft. Yes, comment what running back you don't want to draft this season. Yeah. yeah that's not nice. <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. Like, comment, and we'll see you guys next time.